Most GT3 prices stopped during the summer and are now on their way down. But there are large differences between the generations. For example, 991.1s are down by 7% while older cars continue to increase in value. They appear to be resilient to the downward market trend. And all of this means that the price trends are no longer developing in sync, they are diverging. In this video we'll discuss the generations for which prices increased, the generations for which prices decreased, how this relates to the general market trend and what this means for buyers. But let's start with an overview of the current market so we're all on the same page. Over here we have the GT market at the end of October split by generation. If we look at the prices we can see a few interesting things. First of all, the 996 and especially 997 generations are priced at 991 or even above 991.1 price levels. These cars are collectible items and as you can see quite rare indeed. You can also see that the mileage and the spec level is key for this generation. Cars that are in excellent condition demand significant premiums. Moving on to the 991 generation, we can see a significant price gap between the 991.1 and 991.2. Dot 2s are $56,000 more expensive. In relative terms, the gap between the Dot 1 and Dot 2 is as large as the gap between the Dot 2 and the 992. While the latter gap of course represents a change in generation. But that's not all, no. The gap between the Dot 1 and Dot 2 has been increasing. But more about that soon when we have a look at the price trend. Let's first zoom in to the 991.2 and 992 generation. We can see now that there are a lot of touring models at the top end of the market. For both generations they demand a premium of approximately $40,000. It's also evident that the 992 is a significant step up in terms of price point. They demand a premium of $90,000 over the 991.2. And with that we're up to date on the current market situation. So let's have a look at the price trends. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, prices decreased for most GT3s. But this does not apply to the older generations. So far they appear to be relatively immune to the market trend, a trend that is turning down. We'll start with the 996s and work our way up to the 992s. Over here we have the price trend for the 996. And just by looking at it, it's clear that the trend is still quite strong. Values increased by 15.9% between July and the end of October. Compared to May 21, values are even up by 85%. Yes, 85%. That's good news if you're an owner, but sad news if you're a buyer. However, there are a few limitations when it comes to this price trend. We can see that the confidence intervals are relatively large. And this means that there's a lot of uncertainty in the prices that you see here. Supply tends to hover between 4 and 10 cars. Yet, the data does hold up when you look at a more granular level. Those of you who looked this video over here have already seen this. But just in case you haven't, let's take a quick look. Over here we can see the development split by the mileage buckets. And this reveals a few things. We can see that it are the higher mileage cars that kept their value the best during the last few months. But, when we look at a longer time horizon, we can see that the low mileage examples increased the most, and perhaps a bit too much. They went for insane premiums during last winter, but values decreased more recently. Now I think that's enough information about the 996 market. Let's continue with the 997 generation. Over here we have the price trends for the 997.1 and 997.2 market. We can see that the dot ones decreased by 7.4% and that dot twos increased by 4.6%. While there are differences between the cars, it's strange that the prices diverge with this magnitude. Historically they moved in parallel. Just as in the 996 market, the confidence intervals are large and this suggests that the price uncertainty is large. Supply is low and this makes it difficult to get a reliable price trend. For what it's worth, these price changes are not fully statistically confirmed, hereby further reinforcing our observations that they could be the result of chance. However, keeping all of this in mind, when we break the data down further, it appears to be so that the price trend for the 997.2 is the strongest. Over here we have the price development for the Dot 1 and Dot 2 broken down by the mileage buckets. Just by looking at these developments, we can see that Dot 2 prices held up very well. It's the low mileage segment that saw a sharp price decrease. The rest of the market saw stable prices or a price increase. Looking at the graph for the Dot 2s, we can see that all price trends stopped and that prices decreased. So summing up the price trends for the older GT3s, the 996s and the 997s, it appears to be so that prices are the strongest in the 996 and 997.2 market. A valid question is whether or not these cars are actually selling. It might be so that they are just gathering dust in a garage. 
This video over here contains an analysis of the average time that the cars are advertised. Results show that the average advertised time remained approximately the same between 2019 Q3 and now. Or in other words, there appears to be sufficient demand for these high prices. And with that it's time to take a big leap forward and have a look at the 991 generation. Prices for modern GT3s are down, but there are big differences between the generations. Over here we have the prices for the non-touring versions, split by generation. Between July and the end of October, DOT 2s lost 2.7% and the DOT 1s 2.8%. Compared to April though, it is 3.1% for the DOT 2 and 6.9% for the DOT 1. So there is a clear difference when we look at the long time horizon. If we extend the horizon even further to January 2020, we can see that the DOT 2s are up by 21% and the DOT 1s by 18%. So the DOT 1 always performs slightly worse than the DOT 2, but the margins are not huge and we shouldn't exaggerate this. Yet, it could be related to the engine warranty of the DOT 1s. These cars are notorious for their engine problems and many got a completely new engine. As a response to customer concerns, Porsche issued a 10 year or 120,000 miles warranty for this engine. And this of course means that the engine warranty for a 2014 car starts to approach its end. So there might be a group of owners who are selling or are thinking about selling because of this. But I recommend that you check out the Rentless forum if you want to know all the details about the engine problems. Anyways, going back to the prices, it's difficult to link this directly to the difference in the price trends. However, if we take a deep dive into the prices, we can see that the DOT 2s might be indeed holding up better. In fact, the graphs are rather similar to the ones for the 997.1 and DOT 2. Over here we have the price developments per mileage bucket for both generations. Looking at the one for the DOT 1, we can see a clear top in the price trends followed by a decline. And this pattern is also visible in the DOT 2 market, but the decline is less severe. So summing up the 991 market, we can say that prices topped and that they are decreasing in both the DOT 1 and the DOT 2 market. Out of those two segments though, it is the DOT 2 that appears to be most resilient against the market correction. Now before we jump to the 992, let's have a quick look at the Touring model and the differences between the manual and PDK 991.2s. Over here we have the DOT 2 Touring and as a reference also the standard version. The Touring market is very small, as supply tends to fluctuate between 6 and 20 cars. And I think you can guess what I'm about to say here. Yes, this makes it difficult to get a reliable price trend. In the grand scheme of things, the Touring prices follow the prices for the standard model. Unfortunately, we cannot read too much into each and every price fluctuation. Something what we can do though, is look at the differences between the PDKs and the manuals. Are manuals performing better because they are the real driver's car? The short answer is no. Over here we have the prices for the 991.2 split by transmission type. And you can see that the price trends move in parallel. Manuals tend to be more expensive, but they also get driven less and have a lower mileage. This is of course not really a unique finding, but I know that many of you are interested in this split. And with that it's time to have a look at the most recent generation, the 992. Over here we have the price development for the used 992 GT3 market, split by the Touring and the non-Touring models. I think we're all aware that prices for these cars are high and that it's extremely difficult to get your hands on one. Yet, as we can see here, values are coming down. The median price for a GT3 was $325,000 in January, while it is now $295,000. So that means that prices dropped by $30,000 or 9.3% during the last 10 months. And this applies to both the PDKs and the manuals. That must hurt a little, at least if you bought it with the idea that values would continue to climb. Things are not much better in the touring market. Prices dropped by 5.7% or $20,000 during the last 6 months. Looking at the developments in the market, this is not so strange. Supply increased from 26 to 79 cars and also the median mileage is way up. We can see the same patterns in the touring market. Supply and mileages are slowly increasing. And with that it's time to wrap up and conclude. We covered a large number of graphs and these showed us that the 996 and 997.2 GT3s have the strongest price trends, but also that we need to be careful when we interpret those trends. Price trends for other generations turned down. But that's not strange at all, 
is what we can see in the majority of the markets. If you're subscribed to the channel, you know that car values increased during the pandemic and tops during last summer, and this applies to most GT3s. 10 months ago I showed you that prices were topping, and 3 months ago we confirmed that price trends turned. In other words, depreciation is back. Whether that's a good thing or not depends whether you're buying or selling. I guess that sellers don't mind the high prices, while buyers might be happy to see the market cooling off a bit. But like I also shared with you last week, if you're in the market to purchase a GT3, I think it's worthwhile to wait a moment. That is, if you care about values. Prices only turned down recently and depreciation rates are higher than usual. So if you buy now, you risk catching a falling knife. And with that we arrived at the end of this video. Now if you enjoy this data driven way of analyzing car markets, but would like to see the analysis for a different car, let me know the name of that car by commenting it down below in the comment section. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I will make a video about it. I also recently put out a poll about a few cars for which I received many requests. As you can see, the Huracan is the clear winner. I need a bit more data for a full video, but please be assured that there will be a Huracan market update in the future. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.